Hi, I'm Matthew Florida. And I'm Whitney Raines. And welcome to episode 17 of Chive TV from the couch. In the lunchroom. There are some changes being made to what it takes to get a high school diploma. Let's go check it out. Most of you watching would agree high school is hard enough as is. Imagine changes to graduation requirements resulting in 6% of last year's senior class not graduating. With new diploma requirements known as graduation pathways proposed by the Indiana State Legislature, this will be set to affect the class of 2023, our current 7th grade class. We sat down with Dr. Larry Baracco to find out more. What happened is last year the General Assembly, which is our legislative body, they turned it over to the State Board of Ed to come up with a plan to create, uh, I'll call it a more rigorous diploma. And so if you, if you picture this new plan saying, we want to have different degrees of how good your diploma is, we're in favor of anything that allows the university or an employer say, based on the coursework you took and the preparation you took, we think you're ready to take an entrance exam, or we think you're not, you need more you know, development. As Dr. Varaco just mentioned, these requirement changes could prove to be beneficial by allowing students to achieve a higher diploma status. This will result in more job opportunities out of high school, allowing employers to have more credibility hiring an 18 or 19 year old. These requirements may include meeting a benchmark ACT and SAT score as well as an internship. But for some students that is easier said than done. Well it's difficult because I really like some components of it. For certain students it makes sense. On the other hand for some students and for the, the, the scenarios we just spoke of it's going to be problematic and um, it's going to fall on us and it appears that for a lot of students because of the way the pathways are set up, those students who were earning the general diploma in the past, the general diploma won't be good enough to get a diploma. And for some students, that's, they are working up to their capacity. They're working up to, you know, they're maximizing their capability and they deserve a diploma. Last year's class, we would have had uh, between five and six percent of our students would not have gotten a diploma who did if this, if this rule were in place. If we produce young people with this skill set and this background, they're able to pass a, a test with this level of math skills and this level of computer skills, will you interview them? And so it could really work out well, but I just think there are a lot of unanswered questions at this time. Drew and I have a new segment coming out on LCTV called Region Food Reviews. Let's go get our grub on. So today on Region Food Reviews, me and Matt are at Gyro Express, gy Gyro, Gyro, I don't know how you say it, I'm not Greek. I think Guy Freddy should come here. We just got our food here at Gyro Express. I got a ribeye steak sandwich. Uh, the bread doesn't look big enough to cover up the whole sandwich, but that's the only downfall so far. It looks good beside that. Yeah, actually, I ordered the shrimp basket and they actually gave me a complimentary piece of toast, which I did not <laughs> see in the advertisement, so that's already a plus for me. It's, it smells pretty good. And the first bite of my ribeye steak sandwich. Mmm. I really enjoy those. The bread is toasted really well. Now, it tastes delicious, honestly. This place is slept on. Their ketchup is nice and freezing cold. They keep their ketchup in the refrigerator, so, you know, cold ketchup. I love it. And first bite of the These shrimp. fries are pretty good. That's pretty good. Not deny that this food is fresh, hot, you know, I, I'm, lo I'm loving it so far. This shrimp basket is highly slept on. I, I think this place might be a hit, Drew. I think we might have found a hidden gem in the region. 21 pieces, I mean, $9. I probably got more food than I could have gotten El Amigo. I will try mystery sauce. It's just cocktail sauce. <laughs> mystery sauce number one. And the shrimp is coated in the mystery sauce. And now I will try mystery sauce. I don't know. So, this place, it's located uh, right next to Alamit. Why? Why Why did you do that? Continue. They have a lot of options. They have hot dogs, they have gyros, they have steak sandwiches, they got shrimp, they got toast, they got ketchup. So, no, they yeah. got everything you could ask for. 
Yeah, this place, I actually never cared about it until I came in here and tried it, but I'm presently surprised. Very pleasantly surprised. Mm. Jew, it looks like you're currently hogging down that sandwich. I like steak. Oh yeah, I forgot to try the toast here, actually. As you know, I don't eat the crust, so let me just peel this off real quick. I will now try mm. my bite of toast. Tastes like toast. Oh, it's fine. I put my steak sandwich on garlic bread. Mm. That's something you don't get every day. Now, Drew, I have to ask you why your meat is just kind of dangling on your tray right there. Well, not the necessarily in your basket. I wanted to put ketchup down for my fries. I had to move the sandwich out of the way for that to be plausible. A sandwich, I'll give it a seven out of 10. As you can see, like there's some parts that are just fat and it's really gross. But for the most part, it's really good. And the fries, what, what are we saying about the fries on the final rating here? I'm gonna give those a six out of 10, not meaning they're bad, but just because they're just like your typical average fries, you know, they're good, but they're not like, oh my God. Shrimp, I mean, you know, for, for the value, the price, the amount of food, um, it's not that bad. It tastes really good. It's crunchy, crispy, a lot of it. Um, I'll give a solid 7 out of 10 also. And the fries, yeah, I'll probably give a, I'll go 6.5. They they exceed my expectations. Um, but they're just your average fry, but I do enjoy them. Hey man, did you have a good time at Formal? Yeah, I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Let's go check out some highlights. Yeah, I'm Mr. Swartz and Chuber, and the uh, character quality I'm talking about today is commitment. Uh, commitment to me is deciding to do something, whether it be, you know, joining a, a club, an athletic group, um, you know, whatever it may be, for example, and seeing it through. You know, putting in a hundred percent effort, uh, showing up for things on time, giving, a, you know, working hard at it, preparing for it. And through the highs and the lows, you stick to it and, and see it through and, and give it your best uh, every day. Hi, my name is Kenzie Schilling and I am a freshman. At Lake Central, I've seen a lot of commitment here, especially in sports. Uh, one of my teammates, they were really committed to my track team and I really wanted to give up at practice and they told me to keep going and they showed me that I shouldn't stop. I'm Jeff Sandor, I'm the Assistant Athletic Director, and I was asked to speak about one of the nine character flags we have hanging in Main Street, and I selected Commitment. Commitment is dedication to a cause or activity uh, relating to today's students. I believe Commitment is doing everything they can to better themselves in the classroom, to their families, to their schools, their extracurricular activities, and not just doing it to a level everyone else is, but trying to go above and beyond. That's Commitment. Hey Whitney, what are you doing? Just watching some Netflix. Well, that's what our next segment's about. Let's go check it out. Oh, Kennedy, what are you watching? I'm watching Stranger Things right now. I'm on season two, and it is getting so good. I mean, I'm binge watching it at this point. Dude, I don't know. I just feel like I can never find like the show for me on Netflix. Like, I never know what to watch. I think some of the kids that 
and LC can help us out. What's your guys' favorite show to watch on Netflix? I have to say American Horror Story just because I like all the plots and how like I guess like suspenseful it is and stuff like that and I don't like boring shows and it's not boring. So how many times I watch Netflix a day? Not really like ever. Like I suck at keeping up with shows but like every once in a while like if I'm that bored I'll watch it but not like all the time. Favorite Netflix show would have to be Stranger Things, and because who doesn't love four little kids growing up seeing demons going through a lot and no one believing them. The first season of Stranger Things is about a kid that goes missing, he gets stolen by a Demogorgon, and the rest of his three friends have to come and find him. That's the coolest. I watch Netflix at least every night until I fall asleep to it. My favorite show on Netflix is The Office. I like The Office because it's really funny. Uh, I watch Netflix probably at least once a day to once every other day. Let's go check in with our Indian, Justin Graves, and see how this year's coming along for him. Hello, I'm Justin Graves. I'm the Indian this year for Lake Central. Uh, the football season was, it was pretty good as a student body, and it would have been awesome to win a few more games and get even more people out to the games, but I thought as a student section we did pretty well and we brought a lot of people out to the games. Things I would like to see more from the students is definitely support, bring people out, spread the word about games, and uh, just do the themes. Go out, go all out, do as much as you can, and come and support the team and be loud. This year's basketball season has been good, and um, I think the student body has definitely been coming out to a lot of games, but we could definitely go to a lot more. and do the themes, we need to be very loud and uh, the drum tradition that I'm trying to start this year and for years to come, I hope to keep doing that at a lot more home games and definitely for sectionals, guys basketball. Uh, for the Indian next year, I'm, uh, I've had a few names in my head, but I, uh, nothing's official yet and uh, we will figure that out after basketball season ends and when all the uh, sports are coming to a close but definitely have a few names in my head and uh, we'll be announcing that at the end of the year. What's up Lake Central? I'm Michael Pucci. St. Paul's is just around the corner. Want to help donate and look stylish at the same time? Hoosier Sports has created two kinds of shirts for Lake Central. The Shave the Date shirt has three different styles. Crew neck, t-shirt, and long sleeve. They've also created a special shirt for us, like the one that I'm wearing. It's called the Mount Baltimore. On this shirt, it includes the heads of Mr. Smith, Mr. Bafia, Mr. Rohde, and Dr. Larry Varaco. $10 from every sale is donated to the St. Baldrick's Foundation. You can buy these shirts online at HoosierSportsOfAmerica.com. Thanks, Link Central. I'm Michael Pucci. Have a nice day. Jack Thiel explored the movie Jumanji for us. Let's go see what he has to say. I'm Coleman Tomaszewski. This is a movie review. Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. I forgot my notes in the classroom. Jack, sit here and don't touch anything, okay? I'll be right back. So I'm gonna do the movie review for Colm because we don't have time for any of these shenanigans today. So actually, the first Jumanji movie was made 21 years ago when it starred Robin Williams, but this one is actually really different. And this one that just came out, four high school students stumble upon a great discovery. But this one is Jumanji the video game, not the board game. You pick a character and you're that person in the game. Which one do I pick? I don't think it matters that much. Oops. The actors and actress in this movie are actually really great. Dwayne Johnson once again starring in a movie and killing that role. Kevin Hart, comedian as always, always having something funny to say. He played great in Jumanji. Jack Black I'm a little questionable about. I didn't think he was really the best fit for Jumanji. Karen Gillan, I really thought she was a really great actress. I mean, I've never really seen, seen her act in a movie, but I really feel like she played great in the role. And then there's Nick Jonas. Nick Jonas was brought into the movie a little later, and I really feel like he did a great job. I know he's known for his music and everything, but I really feel like he did a great job in acting. Bethany, don't look at it! <gasps> no! I'm an overweight middle-aged man. Well, I don't have my Claritin, and all I see around here is Paula. Well, I don't have a top two feet of my body! Jumanji was a huge hit. It surpassed $700 million in the global box offices. Once again, Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart are in a big movie with big numbers and big money value. So I have to rate this a 4.5 out of 5 
Dwayne Johnson's. I mean, it was a great movie. It was really funny. I definitely believe you guys should go to the movies, grab a popcorn, catch a seat, watch the movie. And for that's it, I'm Jack Field. I hope you really enjoyed your movie review. Oh, sorry guys. All right, LC, that's all we have for you this week. I'm Matthew Florida. And I'm Whitney Rain. We'll catch you on the next episode of Tribe TV.